Hi guys, are you here? In this video, we're going to be continuing with the critique. It's kind of a part two. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be recreating this uh, this render. We're going to be fixing all these problems, you know, the uh, blur flow, the uh, levels of the um, of the black tones, uh, you know, the text positioning, etc. So I will basically show you how would I approach uh, creating this render. So I have a blend file sent by Alec, and uh, we have exactly the scene that's been rendered. So we're going to go to um, Cycles and have a look. And now, first of all, you can see that it's really dark and that's the first problem. Okay, this is way too dark. If I'm going to screenshot this and bring it to Photoshop, you'll see that this is basically too dark. Okay, so let me show you. You see that the histogram is really bunched up to the left side. I mean, these all, all these places are, you know, um, underexposed. They're basically clipped. This should be probably, you know, at least, okay, that bright, right, at least. I would even increase some shadows, maybe pop some clarity. You know, and this would be kind of an acceptable level to work with, okay. So, that's the first problem. Second problem is that, you know, we, we do have some light, but the direction could be a bit better. There could be some separation between the vessel and the, and the background. And uh, we got some problems on the background itself. Let me just turn off these um, um, grids here so you can see better. If this was a still image, I mean still image, right? It's a complete mess because you got um, these lines slashing the vessel in half, literally. Kind of framing it in here. So yeah, we got the motion blur done in Photoshop, which fixes all the problems. But if you know, if you wanted to render it on this background, I would suggest the following. I would suggest moving this light outside, outside, moving these lines a bit forward, um, going easy on the detail here because it's a lot of details, and you know, possibly creating some kind of a blur on the background because. If you look at the background, the pipes, you know, the, the scaling of the background uh, makes this ship look a bit like a toy, right? I mean, these pipes are massive. If this is, if, you know, this is a, a ship, um, you know, th these pipes are like, what, 10 meters wide or something that's just mental. So, you know, you need to think of a scale when, you, when you're creating something, okay? So if I'm going to go back here and let me just turn off this grid because uh, it pisses me off. And, you know, we can scale them down a bit. Uh, so shift Y, I suppose. Yeah. So, you know, something like this maybe will be a bit better. So, you know, something just less crazy. This should be seriously smaller. This is just way too big. But anyway, I digress. So let's leave it as is, you know, because we're going to be blurring this anyway. So technically it doesn't matter. Now uh, we have a ship here, but the ship, I can see that it's, um, the decals have been, uh, place separately. We have camera lights. I'm not sure what the camera lights are. We're gonna check it in a second. There's a background, right? Uh, which we can turn off. And we're gonna be rendering this vessel without a background. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Okay, so with this vessel um, only in the scene, we're gonna make it bigger. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, let me just check the camera. This uh, focal length is pretty decent, 135 is going to uh, help us create like a compressed image. Um, so let's maybe zoom in a little bit on this, okay? So first of all, like I told you, I think this should be much closer. Okay? M make sure that this vessel takes a bit more space in the image, okay? It's just, you know, fill a frame with it, do something like this maybe, okay? Uh, you know, something crazy. Uh, something like this would work. Something like this would work. This could actually work, to be honest. You know, create an illusion that this vessel is bigger than it actually is, okay? That's one. Two, we need to fix this HDRI because it's way too dark, okay? So we're going to go here and shader world. And the first problem we have here that, you know, it's at half strength. So that's the first problem. Second problem is that this HDRI may be not the best for it, okay? I can see that you're using the uh, Sensuals, Alex Sensuals HDRIs, which are very good. Let's try a different HDRI. In this situation, what I would do, I would just change the material here, because this is really, doesn't look good. I'll time and just drop a blank mat, and let's see what happens. We can increase the roughness on it a bit, and, you know, make it a bit brighter. Maybe not as bright. 
something like this would work so there is a separation on elements but you know it's not that dark also this one i think nope uh, the wings here on the side which mud is it so dark is this place here that's causing so much shadow okay what we could do is select that you know here and uh, simply select a different mud here so uh, we could add a material add the one that we just created and assign and it's gonna brighten things up a little bit probably over there a bit not much but a bit it's a little bit better okay it's a little bit better This one actually is pretty cool, but it needs to be rotated. Let me go to EV again, and let's rotate it and see what's going to happen. We could do something like this, okay, directional from the front. This actually looks pretty decent. Let's go back to cycles. That isn't terrible. This could be darker now, see. There you go. So let's try this one. Uh, strength might be a bit too much. Uh, let's see if we can remove this light from here. Uh, to create a little bit more drama uh, Let me see if we we'll remove this light. Now this light is actually quite necessary. There's a good light over there Could have one more from the back or reflector, uh, but this is pretty decent. I think so if you're going to render this right now, right? Let's see what we have here. Okay, that's 4k basically if 16 perfect. Okay, let's render this also Let's go to compositing and see what we have here now you don't really need glare mate okay um i would remove glare here because if you enable glare for this uh, render you're gonna end up with uh, kind of like bloomy reflections and you have a lot of reflections on the vessel because it's quite reflective so that's not the best idea okay in fact we could we could dampen down this reflectivity a bit more so go here to roughness amount and you know pump it up a bit to maybe 0 0.8 so it's not as reflective right and then let's see the render how we're gonna look this is just a test render to see how we're looking let me change the performance here because i don't want to wait till the end of the of the of the earth um 2048 by 2048 and uh, let me just do it again if you're using card like uh you know something um 1080 Ti Plus, you might try 1024. Um, hang on, let me just turn off this background here. Now I can see that the render is blurry, which means after resetting the camera, we need to change the um, um, manual. It probably there's a depth of field setup in here, so let's select the camera. And let's go to depth of field. Let's uh, manually select this one. It should be good. Uh, let me see if I'm unlocked. I'm unlocked. Yeah, that will do. Yeah, we're looking decent, guys. The only problem is it's really reflective, so this is quite bright. I'm not saying it's bad, because if you're going to grab this one and bring it to Photoshop, so bring it somewhere here. Yeah, we found we find we're not overexposed, really, so you know, we could go with this one. Details are really visible. It's pretty cool. I might make it a bit less reflective, though, because it's a little bit, you know, on the crazy side, so let's just cancel this render and let's see if we can make it a bit less reflective so select this mod here and roughness amount let's bump it up to you know maybe 1.2 and let me see that it's metallic surface we might make it a bit darker you know to dampen it down a bit you see what it means it's not so super reflective let's try it again uh, let's see how this goes. Yeah, it's a bit better. You see, it's reflective, but you can see details. If you zoom in, you can see details here. So it's reflective, but not super crazy. Now, you probably enable the bloom for these to pop, but I guarantee you that if you do that, you're going to have bloom uh, sort of shining off of these very reflective surfaces. So I would suggest creating bloom manually in Photoshop or using stuff like Oniric plugin, okay? Um, and you know going over these elements uh, manually uh, the zero graph um, sticker is a bit strong I probably would dump it down a bit in Photoshop um, or just before rendering just you know what you can do is go here select that and uh, the sticker and go to 
uh, tools here and drop the alpha. Uh, you can see it already did that, but I will drop it a bit further, you know, maybe 0.6 or something. So it's not that crazy because this is really white here. Yeah? Um, or, you know, what you could do is go here and drop drop this a bit a bit deeper, you know, to create kind of like a less intrusive sort of uh, text. But, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it's really strong, yeah. It's really strong. Um, I might paint it over in Photoshop to make it a bit less crazy, but uh, but this is quite decent. Now, you see, you can see all the details um, pretty, pretty well. I don't think these uh, areas here are pitch black. Um, they're not. They, they appear to be black, but they're not pitch black. There's still detail over there, which is great. I'm going to grab the background, so I'm going to turn off the ship and turn off the decals. And turn the background on right and uh, my background has moved so let's just select here a uh, right click and select objects and then simply move them here shift C now we zoomed in the camera which means we need to you know kind of zoom in the, the background so uh, to select it and we're going to um, set the pivot point to cursor and scale it on cursor right something like that and these two decals got kind of messed up, so we can turn them off. This doesn't matter, really. I could just remove this. Uh, these are really bright, I would get rid of them. Um, they're probably going to be, when you blur them, you can't see them, but kind of annoying. I would remove these as well, to be honest. Um, uh, these ones are fine. We probably could use something here, but it's okay. The rest of it's going to be, you know, it's going to be... Um, blurred anyway so it doesn't matter um, and the background is blurred anyway so we can just simply render it um, you know like that and then we're gonna blur it in Photoshop so like I said if, if it was me I would be creating something that's uh, you know kind of supports the direction of the vessel uh, that doesn't go you know against the vessel flow this also could be moved a little bit here to be honest but you know it's not the end of the world like I said if we're gonna blur this it doesn't really matter because you can't see that, so. But it's always, you know, the good idea to support um, the flow of the lines of your main object with the background. So I would be rather going this way uh, than, you know, across your, across your vessel. Bits like this one here don't matter as well, because like I said, we're going to be blurring this. But if I was rendering this, if this was like a, you know, visible background, you really want to be careful with elements like these here, you know, this one here. It's really strong. It's near the edge. Um, so, you know, that's also strong here. This is really strong. I'll probably remove that if it was, you know, and this one, like I said, it would be bad if it was going this way or if it was more blended with the background because it, it really stands out. It's contrasty, right? So if you use the same material, it wouldn't be as bad, okay? But because it's really dark in the middle, it kind of clashes with everything, so especially if the vessel goes across of it, you know. Okay, let's bring them both to Photoshop and see what we get. We got two of them. Just grab this one, hold shift, and drop it on top here. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's grab this one, let's go to right click, and we're gonna convert to smart object so we can adjust the filter, blur, motion blur. Uh, not this one, um, filter, blur, motion blur. Now you need to adjust the motion blur to the same angle as your vessel, okay, that's really important, so, and you want to be precise with it, okay, so more or less this way, right, so if I blur that, it's going to make sense, you see now, see how strong these pipes are, they're just way too strong, okay, way too strong, okay, and now this is where the precision gets in, right, you really need to be precise with it. So, I'm going to put OK here. I'm going to scale this, guys, right? So, I'm going to, you know, Control t that and scale it out, all right? Like this. Because, really. And you see how strong this element is? How strong this dark element is? It's just, it really doesn't look good, in my opinion. I, I think I'm just going to redo this. So...
this will do these pipes quite frankly i'll just remove them um you know they're kind of cool but they're not really they're not gonna be visible anyway so it doesn't matter something like that is enough guys okay and then you know render this again so now this is gonna basically follow the follow the direction of of our um of our vessel you know it's gonna be probably better you see that it's there is a difference of colors but it's not too intrusive these sides don't really matter I mean, we could still put something here if you wanted to but the pipes would be okay to be honest you know on sides um we can work on this one while we wait so Control j and let's go to filter and uh, camera row filter let's see the levels i think we still have some dark spots in here on the right side so we can lift up the shadows a bit with a bit of clipping but not too much just a little bit that's okay put some clarity on this vessel because we will need that um and uh maybe not as much clarity there we go we could pump exposure a little bit you know a little bit and maybe reduce the highlights just a tiny bit yeah and you know it's gonna pump it up a bit that's cool uh, we need this background so let's see how we're doing we're almost there it's gonna help so it's blurred because you know it's gonna be easier to to blur it a bit even more um depth of field is kicking in here so that's great and let's go to filter and blur and motion blur and now we can just you know kind of direct it appropriately now if you wanted to blur it like this that's cool but what you need to do is Control t that and you need to rotate it to adjust it to the vessel direction i mean you really need to be precise with it okay and then make it simply bigger with alt okay you can you know do something like this and then you can move it around uh, and see you know if it fits your image right like this for example element here that's not the best idea we might want to do something like this that's going to be good the lines are almost agreeing with the vessel let's align them really 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 precisely okay because it's going to emphasize the you know the vessel direction boom see what i mean look how bad this looks now you can lower the uh, the blur here so just simply double click on the blur and just lower the blur um so we could you know lower lower the bit so you can actually see some background but you don't want to overdo it because you know the background is really strong what you can do right is grab a grab a layer um, grab a color whichever color could be the bright one um, and um, you know paint it over and then simply drop the fill or drop a soft light on it right um, but uh, you could just simply drop the opacity a little bit on it so it's not as competing as this you see what i mean it's less visible now the vessel pops so you know that's the key and uh, we could put some colors on it now the background could be colored as well so what we could do is uh you know um, grab some levels here and go to rgb and blue and you know add some blue color to it so let me see that a bit of blue to the shadows and some warmth to the highlights so the vessel is going to pop even more uh, and then you could go with some infinite color here on top of it and create some really kick-ass image the first one was actually pretty cool well, this one isn't bad um, and then we can harmonize it on top of it it's going to harmonize all the colors across and you get yourself a cool image now this is a little bit dark uh, so we can do you see what's actually causing this uh, this image to become so dark this one so we can change the curves here to color so they will not affect the darkness and brightness and i think harmonize is also we could switch it to color as well right and then uh, on top of it we could just grab some curves grab this hand and lift it up a bit here or we could just you know use it only for the vessel so 
move it up here, move this down, and clip it here. Move it outside this group and clip it to the vessel. So it only brightens the vessel, you see what I mean? And you can reduce the opacity of it. So it's a bit darker, but not too dark. You know what I mean? So now this one, we could actually drop it a little bit more to create a bit more stronger framing. That is cool. This is acceptable. I like that. So let's save it. And then let's talk about text. Okay, now this problem here needs to be fixed. So what we can do is uh, shift Control alt and e uh, We can grab a lasso tool, run a lasso here and on this area here and go content aware fill sort sort it now we need some text here so you know text uh, what kind of font did you use I mean, what kind of text did you use let me see that what was it again um, search and destroy right I mean the text is okay but um, I would probably um, use a different font something that's a bit more strong like for example this one it fits the angular character of the vessel okay the structure um, maybe this one is not ideal but you know something a bit more punchy and maybe it just squash it so it's not as prominent and drop it somewhere here now that in terms of color I would probably grab the color from a vessel and then drop the opacity on it so so it's you know not as crazy see what i mean so the text is there but it's not really fighting for the attention with the vessel okay the vessel is still more important you could add for example um kind of a kind of an area here Control d and you know drop the opacity down create something like this Control D, drop a mask, grab a gradient tool, hold shift and and run the gradient here. Not this one, this one. There we go, something like this, you know. Which will kind of uh, correspond with the boxy shape of the vessel. In the top here, you could have your logo. So we could control J this and, you know, move this in here. The logo is what? Nova, right? Or something. Um, it's a... Oh, it's this one, right? It's a decal, so... Nova, and of course we need to clamp a layer here and again sample the color and control delete. Boom! And, you know, this looks far better, okay, than this, right? Do you see what I mean now? So let me turn these texts on. So... See, first of all, you got punch in, in the image, okay? The image is way more punchy. It's the direction of the flow of the of the ground and the vessel's, you know, direction is, is, is consistent. It makes sense to you because here your brain is like, what the fuck is going on? It's like the ground is moving and the vessel isn't, okay? There's just this connection between what's happening and what your brain is telling you. This text is way too big, way too bright and competing with this one, okay? too many dark elements right now at the end if you wanted to add some bloom effects here you could but quite frankly you don't really need to but if you wanted to you could you could add lights manually you know so you could uh, if you really wanted to uh, what color is this kind of bluish right so you could just pump it a bit more bluish and simply you know you would need to be very precise here and paint over these like that And here, you could use the brush, so a pad, like a Wacom tablet or something. I'm using mouse, but not very precise, to be honest. And then you switch the uh, blend mode to dodge, and let's just zoom out. Okay, and you can see that, you know, they're, they're quite visible, actually. So, And then what you can do is you can uh, control J this. And change to soft light, and you could blur them. So, uh, Gaussian blur and blur them, but not that much, just a little bit, right? 
and on top of it you could still create more effects to make them even pop even more so just do these dots kind of a soft brush like this right and then simply change to soft light okay and you got this kind of a halo effect and you see you got really easy lights i mean it's piss easy to do it in photoshop okay they're a bit too strong but you know like i look cool and you same same here you, know, you can create the same thing on these lights not a big problem it's really easy okay um so there you go you know this would be my take on this render so you got dark color elements you got brighter elements you know you get really nice definition the text doesn't compete with the object it kind of flows with it because it's the same color uh, here you got a really strong competition between text and the image and also the the vessel is very kind of a dull you know there's no strong contrast no strong pop okay uh, all right. now if you wanted to create some clouds as well that's cool but you see the problem is your clouds okay it's not a problem the clouds don't move you cannot have the ground moving and the clouds not moving this looks actually like a vessel which is stationary and there is some massive element moving underneath so even if you wanted to add some clouds you would need to make them kind of you know move so um, if I wanted to, let's say, go to my brush and um, grab some clouds. Uh, let me see that clouds, clouds, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, something like this, let's say. And I'm going to grab the really bright, you know, tone here and just certify, you know, just pop some clouds here, okay. This should, they should also move. So, you know, filter blur and motion blur, okay. I mean, there's no other way around it and you see they're gonna become like a mist which is not really super super cool but if you're gonna go with soft light you might achieve something interesting okay because it's gonna add a little bit more kind of like a punch to the image but you know i would just leave it um leave it probably alone something like this could work now if you guys would like to get better design i highly recommend you guys get this blend bros design course it's fantastic there's a lot of theory and practice and it will definitely help you in designing, compositing, composing, camera work, lighting, etc. Because all the theory is explained and there's a lot of information there. And there's also two practical examples. This course is really, really important. Now, another thing is that if you click on the link in the video description, you will uh, get a free PDF with five powerful design tips and possibly some other goodies. So I highly recommend you jump on that also consider joining our membership uh, it's kind of like patreon but on steroids there's a lot of perks so hop on our website check it out read about it and uh, hopefully you're gonna join us there there's a fantastic community of a lot of people lots of professionals and uh, you know we're growing together so hope to see you there thanks for watching and i'll see you soon